Work out from home number 32 is an upper body day. We're gonna do a whole bunch of focusing on pulling and with some extra pushing added in there. As always, you know we like to pair the two together if we can, get the most bang for our buck during our training time. With our warm up today, three movements that we are starting off with, all to make sure the shoulders feel good ahead of our strength piece. We are gonna start with one of my favorite movements at the moment, the shoulder dislocate. Have a nice little barometer for how the shoulder joints feel. We're gonna do that for 10 reps. From there into the Hindu push-up, which should be a nice, easy Hindu push-up to start off with. And from there into the scorpion, a little rotational exercise for the spine to kind of see not only how good our spinal mobility is, but also how our pec and hip mobility is as well. So we're going to do these three movements for three rounds today. And how do they look? Well, the first thing we need to think about when we're starting, when I'm doing my shoulder dislocates, is what do I have to do it with? Do I have a PVC pipe, like we use in the gym here quite a bit? Do I have a resistance band? We have some people who use things like an umbrella at home. We've got someone who uses an umbrella. Very resourceful, I like that. I'm just going to kneel down here because I'm just staying in one place and move around in my warm up from here. When it comes to the shoulder dislocate, start wide, start easy and be nice to your shoulders. I'm going to pass over, touch the low back and then come back to the front. After two reps or so, if that feels pretty easy, just inch the hands a little bit closer together. The band is far more forgiving than a PVC pipe, so remember that when we're going through our warm-up today. From there, when it comes into our Hindu push-up, keep it nice and gentle to start off with. We're going to have the knees at the end of the mat, bum comes back to the heels, and I extend the arms forward, and just like a pull-up, I'm going to imagine I'm pulling myself forwards, I'm going to transition over the hands, push-up, dig the toes in, Hips come to the ceiling, I'm going to try and mobilize the calf and the hamstring as well as open the shoulder. Knee comes back, hips come down, and I pull myself forwards as I transition over those hands. That's what we should be thinking about in our Hindu push-up today. Last but not least, the scorpion. The best part of the warm-up, I get to lay down, it's so nice. I'm going to bring the hands out into a letter T, and the idea is to try and keep the chest in contact with the floor as much as possible. It's going to move around a little bit, but I'm going to see if I can bring my opposite foot to my opposite hand. So that means left foot tries to reach over to the right hand, and then the right foot tries to reach over to the left hand. If you are super flexible, you might actually get a bit of a touch. And if you're not, just try and get as close as possible. So, with our warm-up today, shoulder dislocates for 10, Hindu push-ups for 5, scorpions for 5 and 5, 10 total. We're doing that for 3 rounds. The strength piece for workout number 32 has a focus on unilateral or single arm pulling. If we can, ideally we are going to do some pulling on rings or TRX, add an extra core component in. But if you don't have rings or a TRX, we can talk very quickly about the options you may have available as well. From there, once we've done our single arm pulling, we're going to look at some bilateral both arm pressing in the form of dips today. So with our strength piece, we are going to do five sets. Each set is three minutes long. Within that three minute window, we have two exercises. We are going to do a one arm ring row or TRX row. We're going to do 10 reps on one arm, followed by 10 reps on the other. From there, once I'm done my one arm rows, I'm then going to come into some dips between five to 10 reps, depending on what you have available. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So first things first, when it comes to one arm rows, do I have rings available? Do I have a TRX available? What can I use to get my one arm rows done? So over here on the rig, I have some rings. Happy days. The only thing to remember is that if you are using a TRX, the TRX is center mounted and the straps like to move up and down. So you might have to hold two straps together or find a way to lock one out. If I'm on a ring, a little bit simpler, what I'm gonna do is make sure that when I set up for my one arm ring row is that the strap comes straight down and in line with the arm that I am rowing with. Just should be straight down in that line. From here, I want a reasonably wide base, bum tight, abs tight, legs tight. I drive the elbows back, bring the chest to the rings, and control down. So I'm gonna just do 10 reps. All I'm gonna be mindful of is when I'm doing my one-arm ring rows is not rotating. I'm not bringing my chest down and open. I'm not pulling up and curling in. It should be shoulders square. So I like to keep my hand on my chest so I can see my elbow in my peripheral vision and notice if I'm starting to move around or not. Once I've done 10 reps on both arms, we're then going to get into dips today. So that rep range is really dependent on what I have available to me. So that means if I'm at home with maybe just like a bench or some chairs, I've got to find ways to maybe make my dips a little bit harder. 
So the first way to do that is to add more reps, a little bit more time under tension. So that could be hands on bench, maybe my feet on the sofa, try some way to get more body weight into it. But of course, if I'm at home with dip bars available, whether they are homemade, there are some people who made homemade dip bars now, or whether it's people who have like a nice squat rig like we have at the gym here. You could start with five reps and then get progressively more intense, but if you're looking away to make it harder, of course, more reps is the answer. Either way, when I'm looking at dips, it's all about shoulder health first. So do a few test reps, make sure that the shoulders feel good. As always, whatever our dip position is, we want to make sure the hands are in line with the hips. From here, to make sure I don't shrug the shoulders, I push the shoulders away from the ears. Shoulders come down below the elbow, then from there, we press up. If that's easy, find a way to elevate the feet, find a way to put some weight on your lap. From there, if you can, coming up into body weight dips. So we're doing 10 rows per arm, followed by five to 10 dips, and that is our strength piece today. The conditioning piece today, 600 seconds of joy in the form of a 10 minute AMRAP. If you don't know what AMRAP means, it stands for as many rounds or reps as possible. In our round today, we're gonna to do 10 renegade rows, followed by 10 thrusters. So if you don't know what a renegade row is, in a plank position, it's a row, a row and a push-up. We're going to go over how to do that. If you have dumbbells available, this is going to be the ideal tool for it. If you only have one kettlebell, one dumbbell available, you're not entirely sure what to do, of course, send us a message and we will give you some hints and tips of what you can do if you have very limited equipment. With the thruster as well, in an ideal world, we're going to use the same dumbbells that we use for our renegade row, so we can make a seamless transition between those two exercises. And all we're going to do is 10 renegade rows, 10 thrusters, back and forth for 10 minutes. So, when it comes to a renegade row, what are we looking for? First of all, I'm looking for a nice, tight plank position. So, when I'm setting up my dumbbells, they should be somewhere around shoulder width. So that means regardless of what happens, I want to make sure that those dumbbells are straight down from the shoulder. What I find a lot of those people start to get tired, just to kind of warn you before we even start the exercise, People have a habit of putting dumbbells down and moving them forwards, moving them wider, or moving them to be too close. So I need to be fairly uniform, and when I say fairly, I mean very uniform, with the way that I approach my renegade rows. So from here, I'm going to get into a plank position. Feet are going to be a little bit wider than normal, because I know that as I do a row, there's going to be a big propensity for me to roll the hip around. I don't want to do that. So it's going to be a row, a row, followed by a push-up, row, row, push-up. That is the aim of the game today. Of course, if you can't do push-ups on the toes, push-ups on the knees is a very welcome substitution just for today to keep that pace moving. From here, once I've done my renegade rows, row, row, push-up, I'm then gonna come into 10 dumbbell thrusters. So the dumbbells should be resting on the shoulder, keeping the elbows reasonably high. I set my feet up for a squat. I squat, drive overhead, back to the shoulder, and then come into the next rep. So 10 renegade rows, 10 thrusters, that is our conditioning piece for a 10 minute hour. Today's extra sauce, very short, very sweet, a little bit spicy. We are going to do a four minute finisher where each minute is broken up into 30 seconds of work, followed by 30 seconds of rest, we'll call them rest, closely maybe. With our 30 seconds of work, we're going to do a straight leg sit up. And I'll show you that in just a second. And as soon as that 30 seconds is up, I'm going to roll off my mat into a plank on the hands and holding onto that plank for 30 seconds. The intention for today's built finisher is that during the straight leg sit up, is that if I need to take a break, I can, but during the plank on hands, there should be no breaks at all. I know all of you are tough. You can hold a plank for 30 seconds. Make sure we don't let the voice inside take over. That is the aim of the game today. So straight legs sit up. The key is in the title. I've got straight legs, which kind of takes the hip flexor improvement out of it a little bit. And all I'm going to do is sit up. Laying back down, I'm going to sit up. So I'm going to do 30 seconds of straight leg sit ups. When my 30 seconds is done, I hear a beep. I roll straight over onto the hands. Nice tight plank position, the feet together, squeeze the bum, brace the abs. Be there for 30 seconds, and once that 30 seconds is up, straight back down, and into those straight leg sit ups again. So 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of resty holding time, we're going to do that for four minutes today. 